just back up one more verse in 1 John 4, 17. It says that God is love. Now, I want to read to you out of the Passion Translation of uh, 1 John 4, 17. This translation uh, really just paints a really good picture of what uh, of how the perfect love of God um, overcomes fear with faith. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God. God lives through them. By living in God, love has been brought to its full expression in us so that we may be fearlessly face the day of judgment. Because all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. Our love for others is our gratitude and our grateful response to the love of God who first demonstrated his love to us. All right. God wants us to be fearless, okay? He wants us to believe in the work on the cross. He wants us to know that he truly, truly loves us. The Bible tells us that God is love and that love's perfection drives out fear far from us. Now, the past few weeks, Pastor Matt has been preaching on the Beatitudes. Wow, what a powerful series, and I'm so excited for him to preach again on this. By the way, his preaching is so good, I'm just blown away every single week that I hear him give us the word. Listen, the Bible is so powerful. It's life-changing. And the eight principles of recovery in the Christ-centered 12 steps are what makes Celebrate Recovery come to life. Now, the eight principles, they came straight from the eight, the Beatitudes, from the Sermon on the Mount. It's right out of the Bible. It is God's ministry. And Jesus is at the very center of Celebrate Recovery. You know, he is the reason why we see lives changed. Amen? Amen. That's right. Now, in Celebrate Recovery, we have step four. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Let us examine our ways and test them. And let us return to the Lord, Lamentations 340. And principle four goes right along with step four. It says here, Openly examine and confess my faults to myself and to God and to someone I trust. Happy are the pure in heart, Matthew 5, 8. You know, as I go into this message today, I would like for you to examine yourself, just like step four is asking, just like principle four. Use this time today to reflect on your relationship with Jesus. You know, if you feel like you're slipping away with your walk with Christ, that's okay. Okay. You can return to the Lord. God wants us to run back to him. You know, that is why Jesus spoke the parable of the prodigal son. He wants you to know that he loves you. And he wants you to know that he abides in you. Okay? But the enemy wants nothing more than to distract you. Okay? That's so true. To keep you busy. The enemy wants to keep you so busy you don't have time for God. Okay? The more busy you are, the further away that you get. You know, I'm really glad to see all of you here today because it shows that you want more of God. When I was preparing this message, I asked God, you know, what should I say? And his answer was quite simple. Tell them who I am. Well, okay, simple enough, God. So I'm here telling you that God is love and that his perfect love casts out all fear. Amen? All right, I'm going to ask you some questions. I just want you to think about them. Are you really prepared for the day of judgment? Are you really prepared to meet God on the throne and answer to him about your life on earth? Are you ready to meet your maker? Do you think that you still have time to do what you do and you'll get right with God later? Are you living in sin Are you still dipping and dabbing in things that you're not supposed to? Do you have a secret sin? Are you playing with God and not willing to fully, fully surrender to his will? Are you overcome by fear, anxiety, depression? Are you battling suicidal thoughts? Do you worry too much? Does fear have a grip on you? 
What are you holding on to that you don't want to let go of? Maybe you have resentment towards a family member and bitterness towards your ex. Or maybe you have bitterness towards someone who hurts you. Maybe you're here today and you've tried to quit a bad habit over and over and over and you failed. Maybe you're having a difficult time forgiving yourself for the wrongs that you've done. You know, I don't know what you're going through, but I will tell you this, God does, okay? He sees you, he hears you, and most importantly, God loves you. All right, so today I wanna talk to you about the battles that you face in your life. We're all fighting battles right now. What is your giant? Who is your Goliath? What walls do you have in front of you that you can't seem to get past? Is there something looming over your life right now that you feel helpless? Do you feel defeated? Do you feel sick and tired of being sick and tired? Everybody here is facing a battle. You might be going through a rocky marriage. Maybe you're going through a bad divorce. Maybe you're battling suicidal thoughts today. Maybe you're battling drug addiction, sex addiction, or pornography. Some of you in here are stuffing your hurts and the pain that you have in your life. The wounds that you have are deep, and I know that they hurt. Listen, there is a place where you can take off your mask. There is a place where you can come as you are, where it is okay to be you. Okay, there's a safe place where you can talk about your struggles in life, and it's called Celebrate Recovery. Amen? All right. Now, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Monday night is my favorite day of the week. Why? Because that's the day that I get to go to Celebrate Recovery. Every other week is a testimony night. Wow, I love to hear the stories about how God is taking dry bones and making them come alive. It's amazing to see God's work, man. It really is. The bottom line is I need Celebrate Recovery just as much as anybody that goes needs Celebrate Recovery. God is working on me just as much as God works on you. We're all broken people. Pastor Matt just mentioned this. He mentioned that when it started from Adam and Eve. I'm sure you might have heard the saying, hurt people hurt people. But also, broken people help broken people. Amen? Being able to identify your brokenness gets you one step closer towards your recovery. Look at here. I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm not perfect. There are times when I feel weak. There are times when I feel exhausted mentally, physically, and spiritually. But there's one thing I know, that my God is bigger than my problems. He gives me strength when I am weak. The more time that I spend with God, the more peace that I have. You know, whatever it is that you're facing today, God wants to fight your battles. There is a story in the Bible about a man named Joshua. The calling on his life was tremendous. He was tasked to lead the Israelites to the promised land after Moses had died. God told him, do not be afraid. He told him to be courageous. Now listen to what God told Joshua in the Bible. Joshua 1.5 says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Wow, what an incredible promise from God. You know, Joshua knew after he crossed the Jordan River, he would face great opposition. He knew that he had giants to face. You know, Moses had warned the Israelites in Deuteronomy 9.1, Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan and you are to go to dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourself, cities great and fortified up to heaven, a people great and tall. I don't know about you, but I would be terrified. I'm probably the shortest person in here. <laughs> right. Like I said, Joshua had some giants to face. You know, he knew that he was going to be victorious, though. He had faith, and he was fearless. He knew that if he trusted in God, just like Moses had trusted in God, that he would get through this. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the story of the destruction of Jericho that's found in the Old Testament, Joshua chapter 6, 1 through 27. 
You know, Jericho was a fortified city. It was the biggest giant that the Israelites would face. The Israelites were not prepared for this battle. Jericho was heavily fortified. It was secured. It was armed. They were prepared for war every day. Archaeologists said that the retaining wall, the base wall, was 20 feet high, 6 to 8 foot deep. Okay, And then on top of that, there was another wall built 25 feet tall for a total of 45 feet. The Lord instructed Joshua to march around the city for six days. So the Israelites did it. They marched around a wall that was 45 feet taller than them. Now, I remember when I was in prison at Anamosa State Penitentiary, all I can say is the walls were huge and gigantic. They were all made out of limestone. Over 900 feet of walls, 8 foot thick, 25 foot high, uh, just across the front, 800 foot long across the sides. And the walls also go 18 foot deep into the ground. So, you know, when I first pulled up to the prison and I hopped off the bus, I was intimidated. I was really, really scared. I was like, what did I get myself into? I definitely won't be able to climb over the walls. I got a 10-year sentence, three five-year sentences, and a deuce for a grand total of 27 years. I knew I was going to be there for a while, and there's no way out. So humanly speaking, it was impossible for Joshua to get through these walls, to penetrate. I mean, they were eight foot deep. They were 45 foot tall. Joshua told the soldiers to not say a single word for six days, just march. Then Joshua told them, take seven priests and seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. And the Lord said on the seventh day to march around the city seven times and blow those horns and shout to the Lord with as loud a voice as you can with a great shout. Joshua did exactly what the Lord said. He asked him, and sure enough, the walls of Jericho came down. Israelites overtook the city. They won the battle. They were victorious. They were brave. They were courageous. They had faith in God's plan, and they just trusted him. They listened to God, and he did the impossible. In the end, the biggest foe that they ever faced was defeated. God slayed their giant, and God wants, to, and God wants you to let him fight the battle because he wants to slay your giant today. Now I have a piece of paper with the acrostic um, bulletin that you got. So B stands for courageous. The definition of courage is mental or moral strength to venture, to persevere, and to withstand fear. So if, you're, if you have courage, you will withstand fear. God wants you to have courage. You have to have a firm foundation in your faith. It has to be faith over fear. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Listen, man. Always remember that God will be with you wherever you go. You have nothing to fear. God is with you always. God abides in you. All right. A stands for anointed by God. You know, 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? The Bible says that we become believers of Jesus Christ, that he lives in us, that the Spirit of the living God lives in you. There's nothing that is impossible with God. We are his temple. Church is not a building. We are the church. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We are called to be the light of this world. And in the Bible, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For the Spirit of God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. You have a voice, and God wants you to use it loud and clear. You all here have a story to tell, each and every one of you. God has turned your mess into his message. You have a calling on your life, and that calling is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. T stands for trust in God. 
Joshua put his trust in God, and it led him to the promised land with the Israelites. You know, God told him to circle around the walls of Jericho, and he was obedient to his calling. God wants us to trust in him, and he wants us to be obedient. Even when our circumstances look like giants, when the battle looks impossible, when the struggle that you're dealing with looks like it has no end in sight, God is working even when we don't see it. All right, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 happens to be my favorite verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make our paths straight. We have to learn to lean not on our own understanding. God's timing is perfect. His plan is perfect. He wants us to just trust in him. He wants us to submit to him. Now, principle five of Celebrate Recovery says, voluntarily submit to any and all changes God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires, Matthew 5, 6. Jesus wants us to do what God requires. Jesus wants us to be refined by fire. He wants us to be purified like gold and silver. T stands for time with God. Now listen up. This one is really important because of all the distractions of the world. The more time you spend with God, the closer you are to God. James 4.8 says, come near to God and he will come near to you. By spending time with God in prayer, in Bible study, in worship, and in fellowship, you will mature and you will grow in your faith. The last thing you want to do is distance yourself from God. The more time you spend with God, the stronger your faith will be. Now, I have a quote from Charles Stanley. It says, we can be tired, weary, and emotionally distraught, but after spending time alone with God, we find that he injects us. He injects into our bodies energy, power, and strength. Spending time with God prepares us for the obstacles and struggles in our life. This is where the busyness of the world can pull us away from God. The more distant you are from God, the more fear comes up, the more doubt comes in, shame and guilt and sin finds its way back into our lives. Now, the opposite of fear is peace, and Jesus is a prince of peace. He will give us strength when we spend time with him. L stands for listen to God. The only way you will ever be able to listen to God is if you humble yourself. James 4.10 says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. You know, pride is a wall that stops you from getting closer to God. Complacency is a wall that stops you from getting close to God. Denial is a wall that stops you from getting close to God. But Jesus says in Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. The word meek means to be humble, to be patient without suffering, to be kind and gentle, but also it means to be overly submissive. To be meek is to be overly submissive to God. This goes right along with step six of Celebrate Recovery. We were entirely ready to have God remove all defects of character. Step six doesn't say to have God remove some defects of character. God wants to remove all of the defects of character in your life. God wants to do the impossible, okay? He wants to tear down your walls. He wants to build you up and make you a new creation in Jesus Christ. If you want God to fight the battle and be victorious, you have to listen to him. All right, E in the battle. E stands for everlasting love. God's love for us is unconditional. It's crazy love. It's agape love. It's an indescribable love that he has for us. It's reckless love. His love never ends. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Listen, God has given us eternal life through the Son, Jesus Christ. We know God loves us because of Jesus. He paid the price for our transgressions. He paid the price for our sins, but also for the whole world. 
You must never forget that you have an everlasting love from God. Jeremiah 31.3 says, The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. God is faithful. God is trustworthy. His love never fails. The Bible says in Romans 8.37 and 38, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I repeat, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Amen? All right. Giants fall at the feet of Jesus. He has never lost a battle. God wants you to use your voice to shout out to the Lord. Worship is a weapon. When you open your mouth and you lift up the name of Jesus, the walls will come down. So what are you holding on to? What have you been stumbling with? Right now is the time to let go and let God. It's time to fully surrender to Christ. Not next week, not next month, not next year, but right now. He doesn't want part-time custody. He wants full custody. We are children of God, and he wants full custody of us. What idols do you need to knock down? What sin do you need to repent from? What impurities do you have in your life? You know, God wants you to be holy. He wants you to be set apart. He wants you to be set free. God wants us to examine our hearts. He wants us to be refined. He wants to put us through the fire to purify us. He wants us to receive the Spirit of God in its fullness, overflowing in all areas of our life to proclaim the good news with boldness, with fearlessness. He wants us to proclaim Jesus Christ and be unashamed of it. God will fight for you. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Jesus wants to fight your battles. He wants to slay your giant. Jesus is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is above any other name on earth or in heaven. He is the Messiah. He is the truth. He is the Savior of the world. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the wonderful Counselor. He is the great I am. He is the author. He is the finisher of our faith. Jesus is victorious. He is undefeated. He is the undisputed champion. All right. At the bottom of this sheet of paper, there's a tear out. And I'm asking for every single one here today to have Jesus slay your giant. It is time to fight back. It's time to tell the, the devil, back up back way up. As we start to worship, we're going to allow Jesus to lead the way, okay? Jesus wants to fight the battle. He has never lost. He wants you to be set free. So as we begin to sing worship, I want you to write down, and I want you to lay it at the altar, and we're going to lay it at the hands and feet of Jesus. He's going to take care of it for us. He will set us free. Listen, if you're online and you need prayer, message, email, or call, and if you're here today, you need prayer, you can come up to the front and leaders of the church will be praying for you. Thank you and God bless you all. Faith over fear.